Hey guys, it's Kelly. Let's talk about some launches that need to stop. So fair warning, we'll get a little bit sassy today talking about some launches that I'm really not into. But at the end of this video, we're gonna turn it around and I'm gonna talk about some launches and editing and campaigns that I really like. So we'll throw in some positive at the end. If you're new here, hello, my name is Kelly. Here on this channel, I love talking about beauty, especially a cruelty-free beauty. So if that sounds good to you, be sure to subscribe. I upload four videos every single week and let's go ahead and hop into it. Talking about collabs. Okay, I love a good collab and I'm not necessarily talking about collabs with influencers here. I'm talking about especially collabs with IP because this has blown up in the last year. It is very common for brands to collaborate with movies and television shows and books. And I think there are times that it's done very well. For example, I think ColourPop's latest Barbie collection was very cute. I think it really embodied Barbie. But then there are some other collabs that really feel just like a straight up cash grab. The one that's coming to my mind is the Mac Sims collab that had absolutely nothing to do with the Sims. And it was just an old palette that Mac already had that they re-released with packaging that said Sims on the front. That's kind of an extreme scenario, but in general, there have been a handful of collabs that have that have come out recently that have felt completely uninspired and I'm just so let down. Like there was so much potential to make this amazing. I mean, even with the Cruella collabs, now that that movie is coming out, there was so much potential to do Dalmatian packaging or just do something that really embodies the collaboration a little bit more, but no, just a little discombobulated palette. You should be able to look at a collaboration and know what it's a collab with. Even like Makeup Revolution did the Aristocats collab, again, so much potential to do something really cute there, but they just did a regular palette that had nothing to do with the movie and then put a few paw prints into the pans. We're almost there, but we just needed to do a little bit more and I'm seeing this so much recently. I'm all for the collabs, keep them coming, but a lot of them just feel very uninspired. Duplicate shades in the same palette. So I love Sigma. I'm actually a Sigma affiliate, but they are very guilty of this, so I brought these two as examples. These are nine pan palettes. They're pretty small. In a larger palette, I get it if there are some shades that are similar, but when it's only nine pans, there should be so much range within the palette, and there is not. And Sigma's not the only brand that does this, but they're the easiest example for me. This is the Ivy palette. I really like this palette, but you have these two, wait, no, these two browns. Now, they're slightly different. One has a more neutral undertone, one has a more cool undertone, and one is like half a shade darker than the other. But in a palette this big, to ha or this small, to have those two shades be that similar, what was the point? Like change one of those to a black or make it a really deep purple. That could have been fun in this palette, but to just have those two browns where they're not gonna look that different on the eye, such a waste of space. Same in this rosy palette. I mean, these two, when you put these two on the eye, they're practically the same. Like one is a little bit brighter. Yeah, there's a difference. If I swatched them out, you would see a difference. But in a nine pan palette with only nine shades, to be that similar, and even this one right here, these ones are also very similar. Between these three, did we really need all three? Maybe one of those could have been like a deep chocolatey brown. Like this doesn't even have like a really deep shade to ground the palette. Like these are the deepest shades. So maybe one of these could have been a deep chocolatey brown or a black or a dark purple. I know Lauren May Beauty did a video about this. It was quite a while ago. So I'm going to try to find it. If I can, I'll leave it linked down below. But she was going through palettes and finding shades like this that kind of dupe themselves within one palette. And when it's something as small as nine pans, there's no room for dupes. Another one, and ColourPop is probably the most guilty of this, is re-releasing basically the same thing in a new palette. So ColourPop does this all the time. They will come out with new palettes and new launches that are new, but if you go back through and look at other palettes, these shades have already been created in other ColourPop palettes and not even just the individual shades, like sometimes the entire color story. So you guys know one of my favorite YouTubers is Judy and she is like the ColourPop queen. She reviews all of their launches and she usually compares them to previous ColourPop palettes. So if you are ever wondering, I would check out her reviews first because she goes through and looks at what shades dupe themselves within already existing ColourPop palettes. 
but they're not the only brand. Even Sigma, these ones that I was just sharing, a lot of the nine pans that they launched earlier this year were like smaller versions of their larger palettes. A lot of brands do this where they come out with something that's new, but we all know it's not really new. We know that the original was kind of starting to lose interest and no one was buying it, so they kind of just repackaged something else to then sell more, which, you know, that's fine. And I actually think in that scenario, it almost comes down more to us as consumers just being mindful about our purchases and knowing that this is pretty common, especially with brands like ColourPop, to just kind of relaunch things that they've already launched, but in new packaging or with one or two different shades. All in one face palettes. So what I mean by this, I don't mean all in one in terms of eyes, cheeks, lips, face, that's one thing. Those aren't for me personally, but I do see that there's an audience for that. When I mean all in one, I mean when brands try to create one palette that will work for every skin tone. Because why do that when you can make three separate palettes, four separate palettes? Some brands, the lip bar, they have six separate face palettes for different skin tones. That is a much better route than just doing one palette and having it go from very light to very deep when the average consumer is only gonna be able to use a handful of shades out of that palette. And I know the argument, ooh, there was a blue J, hold on. Oh my gosh, there's the blue J in my tree, he's so cute. But with that, I often hear that, yeah, they, may, they work for makeup artists, which I get and they do, but it's usually from brands that are marketed towards everyday consumers and not makeup artists. Like I would get it more if it was a brand like Makeup Forever, Ben Nye, I don't know, brands that are really marketed towards makeup artists. But when you see it from a brand like Too Faced, they don't really create products for makeup artists. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure makeup artists use Too Faced, but Too Faced demographic, it's average consumers doing makeup on themselves. So having just one shade variation of a face palette doesn't make sense. And Too Faced, I wanna say with their face palette, they have two shades, which is better than one, but still not great. I think we've moved past the need for all-in-one face palettes, and now it just makes sense for a brand to do multiple shade variations so no one has to have wasted shades in their palette. Now, some things that I've been seeing recently that I wanna see more, that I'm loving, that I want to applaud. First is launching the mini with the full size. They're after my heart. You guys know I love mini products. I think for anyone with a decent sized makeup collection, minis oftentimes make more sense if you're not gonna use up a product completely. If you have a smaller makeup collection, you have one product per category or two, I do recommend going with the full size, but when you have four, five, six of every category, a mini could be a better option if you're not gonna use a product up completely. And one brand that has been very good at launching minis with their full size products is Tarte. So I really wanna see every other brand kind of follow that lead and launch minis with full size products. I do understand it from the brand's perspective though because I'm sure for some people they would rather buy the mini and the brand could possibly lose out a bit. It does depend a bit on the product because some products, the mini is a terrible value in terms of cost per ounce compared to the full size. But again, if you're not gonna use it up completely, it might not be a terrible value to you personally, but I do think sometimes it's helpful to do the math. And going back to the brand side of things, I'm sure depending on the product, it doesn't always make sense to do a mini, but I'm telling you when they do it, I love it. I love that Tarte has been launching a mini with almost everything, at least on the Sephora website. The only thing I don't love though is they often only do the mini in a few shades instead of the entire shade range. I'm sure there are complications with doing the minis and I'm sure there's a reason for that, but I just would love to see every shade offered in the minis along with the full size. Another thing I wanna applaud is not necessarily a launch, but it's a change I've been seeing in beauty advertising and marketing and that is unaltered photos. And a retailer that I really wanna shout out for this is CVS. So I follow CVS Beauty over on Instagram and they have this whole campaign called Beauty Unaltered and they post unaltered photos, which is so refreshing because for years, well, decades even, most makeup advertisements are heavily photoshopped. Many lash campaigns will have fake lashes on even when they're selling a mascara. And you do have to be careful because some 
editing can almost be tricky where you look at it and you think, oh, well, I can see their pores, so this is unedited. But no, sometimes they will edit out the blemishes, any fine lines, any of that, and then add in pores so you think it's unedited, but it's not. So they're tricky, but CVS, they have this whole pledge to post unaltered photos. And I found out about this because I follow Drew Barrymore and her brand Flower Beauty on Instagram and Flower Beauty partners with them a lot. And they, I'll show you a photo right here from it of Drew Barrymore and you can see her smiling. You can see some smile lines around her eyes. For a lot of other campaigns, that would be edited out. But the fact that CVS posted it looking like a real human being, I think that's amazing and it gives people more realistic perception of how makeup looks in person because sometimes when we watch videos and we see photos there's this disconnect from reality because they're so often photoshopped and then people apply makeup and wonder why doesn't my makeup look like the campaign photos why doesn't my makeup look like this tiktok video well there's probably a filter on those there's probably a lot of editing done to those i have done a few photos for Flower Beauty before for different campaigns and they always say right in the contract and in the brief don't edit these photos we want the raw photos so I just think that's really cool not all brands are doing that but I'm loving to see it I'm also loving seeing more diversity in makeup campaigns a brand that I specifically want to shout out here is Makeup Revolution they had this campaign recently for their body foundation and I just thought the photos were so beautiful and so inclusive they included models of a variety of skin tones a variety of body types and there's still obviously a long way to go but i think it's very beautiful that more people are able to feel represented in beauty campaigns let me know down below what type of launches or marketing advertising do you want to see stop what trends do you want to die thank you guys so much for watching and i will go ahead and see you in my next one bye